so before we get started in the next set of questions, I wanted to uh, give you a little bit more information than Newton has given you. Uh, one of the things I think Katrina mentioned about knowing whether to do normal CDF or inverse norm, uh, this is in your content section of D2L. Uh, and it's explained a little bit, but I took the words off because I'm going to explain it. Um, so see the black line that goes horizontally across? Um, think of it as a belt because, you know, if a person's standing up, which is usually how you see people, their belts will be horizontal. So that black horizontal line is the belt, the black belt. Um, so, uh, but we're going to talk about boxing rules. And this is how, this is kind of a mnemonic that I use to rem uh, help students remember. In normal boxing rules, um, you are allowed to strike above the belt, right? Um, so normal CDF is for anything that you need to find out that is labeled or drawn above the belt. Um, so when you're looking for areas of shaded regions, uh, that is always using normal CDF if you want to find out what that area value is. Area translates to be probability or percentage. Um, so, and sometimes you can find the value, the numerical value, like the 53rd percentile, you can find that 53rd by doing this too. So sometimes you find percentiles that way too. Um, sometimes you want the actual data value for the 53rd percentile. And in that case, you would label it below the belt. Everything that gets labeled below the belt you use inverse norm for. Inverse means the opposite of, so the opposite of normal, the opposite of normal boxing rules, you're not allowed to strike below the belt. So anything below the belt, you use inverse norm for. So if it says find the data value, well you would traditionally label data values below the axis. And so that's below the belt, so you're gonna use inverse norm for that. Um, and then, so normal CDF for stuff up top, inverse norm for stuff at the bottom. Normal CDF takes in uh, the minimum of the shaded region. So if you happen to have shaded between two values, it would be this value um, and this value. Uh, also, as you'll notice on the sheets of paper that I gave, uh, by the way, if, does anybody not have, um, Tim, do you mind passing things to the um, what's on your sheet of paper there? Um, you'll have positive 1899 here. Thank you so much. Um, and you'll have negative 1899 down here. And so the text uses 9,999. And the reason I don't use that is because if your mean happened to be something like 48,000, 9,999 might not be big enough. But um, one E99, um, and that E is the second comma, by the way, not your alpha E, it's your second comma. It means times 10 to the power of. Um, so one E, hey Kayla, if you'll take this. Thank you. That one E99 um, actually is going to be 1 times 10 to the power of um, 99. So that means it's followed by 99 zeros. So it is an absolutely enormous number. And there's no way that you're ever going to have a mean or a standard deviation um, that's going to be bigger. And so it will, you can always use positive 1899 here and negative 1899 here. Now for Newton problems, um, if you want to use what they've suggested, it will probably always work because they probably suggested it because they're not going to use huge means. But for other problems, um, and maybe on the exam, I don't know what they put on the exam, but maybe for the exam, uh, you're going to you know, encounter something that might potentially need a bigger number than 9,999. Question for you. Yes. How do you implement it with um, so for, uh, actually, 
let me let me show you the example problem and I'll actually put the example problem in the calculator. Um, this is just a picture of what you have on your area um, and this is to help you. So anytime, and we won't get to this for a little bit, we're um, section three is where you'll have this. Um, but and you'll draw a picture on top of these. That, that was our goal. Um, so you'll label what the mean is told. Um, you'll label what value you're told, uh, whether it's here, here, and you'll shade, and then you'll use the. Um, so that's how I intended it to be. I didn't have these printed off though when I drew my picture, but I tried to put most everything on there. Um, so if you're told a scenario where you have at most 40, and I don't even know what the units are on this one, I was just making up the problem pretty quickly. So if you're told at most 40, that means 40 or less, like we've established. Um, the mean is 42, so I label my mean of 42. My standard deviation is six, and I want at most 40, so I label the 40 and I shade everything that is at most 40. Um, and then that means that my minimum of the shaded region is negative 199. My maximum of the shaded region is 40. My mean is 42, and my standard deviation is six. Are there any questions about any of the data inputs? Yeah, but there are no questions about those numbers? Okay. Um, so to input that, we do second DISTR, like our formula card says, um, and then we choose option two, and negative 1899 is already input. Notice how the E is shorter. So if you're using the right E, the E should be shorter. Also, you want to use the right negative, which one student texted me last night um, and was like, I'm, I can't get this right, and I looked at his inputs, and I, I asked him to send me a picture of this um, part of his calculator, but looking at what the input should be, I'm like, oh, the most obvious thing of why he would get an error message is using the minus instead of a negative. So this is the negative key, this is the minus key, so be sure to do that one correctly. Um, but if this weren't already here, we would enter negative, and this is the negative key, and then the one, and then second comma, second and then the comma key. The comma says EE, -E, but when you press it, it only pre puts E there. And then 99. Um, and then we would do 40 and 42 and six. And we would get um, 0 0.3694. Right, right. We were given that in the problem. Yeah. And we were also, we would also be given that in the problem. Um, no, my final answer is 0.3694. Um, but I put negative 1899 for my minimum value um, because uh, it really should be negative infinity. This should be negative infinity. This should be positive infinity, but we don't have infinity, or at least I don't think we have infinity on any of the calculators. Um, the eight, the eighty nines, um, and the ninety ones. I think they do have infinity, but these don't. But negative one e nine nine is the closest thing to negative infinity we can do. Positive one e nine nine is the closest thing to positive infinity we can do. It's much larger than what Newton's recommending. Um, any. Any questions on this one? Any more questions on this one? Okay. Um, and then for this one, it says 10% of students scored more than this value. And so we're told that this 10% are more than this value. We want to know what this value is. And the value itself would get labeled below the belt. By the way, um, if we go back to this problem, the thing that we want to find is this area, because area equals probability, and that's above the belt. So that's why this is normal. But then this one is inverse norm, 
because we labeled this one below the belt. So we want to find this value that 10% are scoring more than. So only 10% are scoring more than. That means 90% are scoring less than. Um, and by the way, most calculators take an area to the left. Some of your calculators are so fancy that you can switch between. Um, but if you want to just set it to area to the left, I'm going to give all of my answers in terms of area to the left because that's the way that most calculators are programmed to do. So I don't put in 10% because it means area to the left. I put in the complement of the 10%. Um, and then I put in the mean and the standard deviation that I'm given. Are there any questions on this one, Kayla? Okay, second comma is the, what you'll do for the E to be little. Okay, other questions? Okay, um, and then do y'all need to see this one put into the calculator or y'all? Okay, so second DISTR option three for inverse norm and then 0.9 or 0 0.90, you'd get the same thing, 77, five. Oh, I've done it so much. Um, but you can go back and read and you see inverse norm is option three. Oh, how did I know it was inverse norm? Because it gets labeled below the belt. And so remember that I said everything above the belt is normal boxing rules, normal CDF, everything below the belt that we want to find. And this is a data value, so we would label it below the belt. Mm -hmm. Right, if you're looking for a data value, if you're looking for a z-score, if you're looking <coughs> for the value of the percentile, then all of those things get labeled below. If, on the other hand, you're looking for a percentage or probability or the percent number that goes with the percentile, like is it the 23rd percentile, you're looking for the 23. If you're looking for that part of the percentile, all of that stuff happens above the belt and so is normal CDF. Other questions? Okay, this part is the part that I thought was the hardest. Um, on one side, you'll have less writing and on the other side, you'll have more. This is the side that has more. And this is for using this same sort of philosophy, but we're going to apply it to binomial distributions. And binomial distributions have a special mean n times p and a special standard deviation n times p times one minus p all under the square root. And if that weren't enough, it also has the crazy thing that Tim mentioned the other day, and you have to do it this time because normal CDF um, is, uh, let, let me read what it actually said. Um, so the binomial distribution is discrete. So anytime you do binomial CDF or binomial PDF, it only cares about whole numbers. That's why two or 2.5 gave us the same thing because it only cares about whole numbers. So the binomial distribution is discrete, but the normal distribution is not discrete, it's continuous. It tells values that are 2.5, it will give you a different answer if you put in two or 2.5. Um, for that reason, you have to do a continuity correction and you have to either add or subtract half from every single one. And it depends on the problem. There's no real formulaic thing that I can tell you. Um, but I can tell you that if, if your value should include it, then add or subtract to make sure that your picture includes the value. Um, so if, if the description includes the value, so if it's like at least four, that does include four. Um, or even in most four, that also includes four. Uh, and so you would have to make sure that where you shaded adding half or subtracting half is going to include four. And you would do one for if it's at most four and a different one for if it's at least four. So look at, and then if it's not included, make sure that you're shading so you're not including it. So if you have to add to make sure not to include it, add. If you have to subtract to make sure you're not including it, subtract. So um, you definitely, it depends on the scenario. Um, I'm 
given a scenario. Um, oh my goodness, I forgot to add, didn't I? Oh, oh, see, I'm not used to this. Um, so this one's actually wrong. Uh, let's see, more than 90. So more than 90, I tried to do this this morning, at the last minute. Um, more than 90 would actually be, um, and let me draw it in a uh, picture instead. So we don't want to include 90, right? Um, so our center is at 50. Um, we have uh, 90, but we don't want to include 90, so we use 90.5 and then 199. So this should be normal CDF of 90.5, um, and we'll do that when we put in the calculator. So normal CDF 90.5 and then 199. And then the mean um, of 50, I've already computed n times p, 100 times 0.5 is 50. And then um, it would be 100 times 1 half times 1 half. Um, because this is 1 minus 1 half. Um, so how did you know to use? Um, on your sheet of paper, you have uh, that the mean is n times p, and P here, yeah, p was given. Usually, they don't out and out say p is this. They say the number, the probability of doing something. So p is the probability of a success. So the probability of a success is your p. Um, so you take your number of trials in and multiply that by the probability of success, P. Um, here, out of 100, says that we have 100 trials. Uh, and then our last part, 1 minus P, um, all of that goes into the square root for our standard deviation. But again, that's all on here, too. Um, so squirt <laughs> is really square root. Um, and so n times p times 1 minus p, um, and then the mean is n times p. Any other questions? Okay. And then to plug this into the calculator, we want to do second DISDR. Um, oh, I'm already there. And then we'll do option two. Oh. We went to inverse norm, let me do quit. So second DISDR, option two, and we want 90.5, because we don't want to include the 90, and then one second comma for the E, and 99, and then the mean is, um, you can literally do 100 times 0.5 here if you want to, but that's gonna give you 50. And then uh, square root of 100 times 0.5. Um, by the way, be sure to put 0.5 instead of 50. Um, and then times uh, 1 minus 0.5. Of course, you could probably do that pretty easily in your head. Um, I'm closing the parenthesis for the 1 minus 0.5, but I'm also closing the parenthesis for the square root. But if you don't close all your parentheses, the calculator's pretty good about that, actually. So, And then I get a very, very, very tiny probability, um, e to the negative 16, so that means zero point, and then 15 zeros, and then 2777. Seven, seven. 